Good morning, good morning and welcome to University United Methodist Church. We are glad you are worshiping with us on this fourth Sunday of Advent, which means it's almost Christmas. And we invite you to fill out a regis your registration either online or with us today in person and any prayer request you may have. We want to let you know that we do have poinsettias. They are $12 each if you would like to dedicate a poinsettia in memory or in honor of someone special, please fill out the form in your bulletin or email it to the church office. Last week, we asked you to look locally at several organizations that reach out to those who are in need as we try to figure out our Christmas offering, and thanks to you, we've done it. Um, locally, our Christmas offering will be going to Nevada Partnership to Homeless Youth, East Valley Services and Nevada Coalition to End Domestic Violence. I know I told you two, but in a case of a tie, we decided let's not vote again. We'll just go with three. And we will be having our Christmas Eve worship services. We invite you to attend. They will be at three, seven, and nine. Um, the seven and the nine will be the same service or very similar. Want to let you know that in case you just want to come to all three. Uh, also, our prayer chain today, um, you have a purple slip. That sounds so much better than the pink slip of last week. The purple slip. And I want to, today our theme is peace. And I'm going to give you a choice. It's what brings you peace? Or where are areas, either in your life or in the world, that you need peace? I will also let you know, since that's a little personal, nobody reads these. We put them up, they're for God to know only. So areas in your life you may need peace, areas in the world where you would like to see peace, or what brings you peace, and we will be putting that up. With that said, let us come. The waiting is almost over. We are expectant. We are expected to experience God in our midst today. And we know one way we do that is through music. So I ask you to prepare your hearts and minds for that encounter as Ken plays our prelude. I invite you to stand as you are able and join me in the call to worship. Clear away the unnecessary. Put aside the unimportant. 
important. Lay down the unrealistic. Keep your ears open for angels' songs. Cut the list in half. The waiting and anticipation is about to find fulfillment. Still your soul and journey deep within your being. Keep your eyes open, looking for a sign, a guiding star. Open your hands, ready to give. Sing with voices filled with song, and fill your heart with longings of hope, love, joy, and peace. Space, where we may know the wonder of angels 
songs and baby smiles. We give us the simple trust of the lowly shepherds and the bold risking of the traveling magi. Holy God, let us know this song and this story are meant for our healing and our encouragement. Amen. So it's time for our children's moment, and I confess I forgot my math, so I cannot invite the children up. So I will just say, I'm sorry, but it's good to have you here. We are glad you are here. We are glad you are with us. And I don't know about you, but did you realize Christmas is less than a week away? And I don't know about you, but I've had lists of things to get done. And it seems this week my lists get longer and longer. I'm not checking things off anymore. Things are being added to it. <laughs> Anybody else feeling like that? And i got to tell you, I am just getting stressed. And we're talking about peace. And I'm trying to figure out how do I find peace when I'm stressed out. And then I realize, oh my gosh, it's a children's moment. And not only did I forget my math, I forgot a children's moment. <laughs> and I think sometimes that's OK. Sometimes it's OK to say, I need a break. I need to step back. The list will never be complete. Everything to get done will never be done. I will, we will always have stuff to do. And sometimes just sit back, breathe, and find peace in this hectic holiday season, particularly as we gear up and are moving towards Christmas. Be sure to take time for yourself to sit and find peace. And it's OK if you forget stuff, because there may be a moment of God in that.
Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, No, he is to be called John. They said to her, None of your relatives has that, this name. Then they began motioning to his father to find out what name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And all of them were amazed. Immediately, his mouth was opened and his tongue freed, and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all the neighbors, and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered them and said, who then, What then will this child become? For indeed, the hand of the Lord was with him. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Today, Elizabeth speaks. And I don't know if you know a lot about birthing or naming rituals of first century Judea, but a child was not named until they were dedicated or circumcised in the temple. Same thing. That's when they would be named. In fact, you hear it within our Christmas text particularly with Jesus, the child will be called. He is not called Jesus until the naming in the temple. And this naming was done by the father. The father would name the son, usually picking a family name. The son would either be named after him, his father, his grandfather, or a relative. And that was the way in which things were done. And so that is what we come to today. We come to the naming of the one who prepares the way for the Lord. And I don't know if you caught some of the subtleties in the text. On the eighth day, they came to dedicate the child. And they were going to name him Zachariah. You know them, that 
ubiquitous those out there, or everybody, or all. But that's not who's supposed to name the child. But they were the ones who thought that the child should be named Zachariah. And Elizabeth speaks up and says, no! The child's name will be John. And then they dismiss her. After all, she's a woman, older, of no consequence. Not somebody important or of power. Somebody who's easily dismissed, easily ignored. And they turn to Zechariah. They do this. Now, we can only assume that they have been around for nine months and they know Zechariah can't speak. And they ignore Elizabeth. And they turned to Zechariah because the answer they got from Elizabeth, while it was truth, it was not the answer they wanted. <laughs> so they turn to Zechariah. And he writes, his name is John. And I can't help but wonder if in that moment for Elizabeth, Did she find peace? Yes, it created conflict. Yes, the people ignored her. Yes, they went about what they normally do, but she spoke. She named her child John. And as we focus on this fourth Sunday of Advent, we focus on peace, and I can't help but think sometimes to speak up, even if it brings conflict, can bring about peace. Because remember, in the biblical text, peace is not the absence of conflict. Peace is that idea of shalom, that idea of truth, that idea that God is with us, and in that we find peace. Elizabeth spoke. Elizabeth found peace. And I wondered about that today. How many times do we find peace when we speak up? When we make our truth heard? When we say we will no longer be ignored? In that, I will find peace. As I mentioned, part of our Christmas offering this year will go to to the Nevada Coalition to End Domestic Violence. I'm still not up on the places that help in Nevada, but it will go to end domestic violence. And so I started looking into this organization and was shocked at some of the things I found. I found that in domestic relationships, which we can define as any time people are together under one roof, seven in 10 people have experienced domestic abuse. Seven in 10 have experienced domestic abuse. And I think we need to give voice to that. And domestic abuse spans all culture, all faiths, all economic strata. It does not discriminate. So think about that. Seven in 10. I dare say seven in 10 people here have experienced domestic abuse of some sort. There's a variety of different types of domestic abuse. There's child abuse, partner abuse, elder abuse. And we need to give voice to that. 
And I got to tell you, speaking about this doesn't necessarily bring about a sense of peace that we traditionally think about. And yet, for peace to be found by those who are abused, it must be spoken. For we know that people living in abusive situations oftentimes feel that they cannot speak, that they do not have a voice. We also know that the most dangerous time for somebody to leave an abusive situation is from the moment they decide to leave until they actually do leave. We also know that in abusive situations, once someone leaves, oftentimes they will come back. And it may take two or three times of leaving, and it becomes more and more dangerous for the person to stay. And yet, we must speak this so that they may find we must speak those things that make us uncomfortable so others may find peace. Those who have been ignored and oppressed must speak so they can find peace. Even though it may bring conflict. I think about the young man who needs to let his family know who he is. And that it may not be the expectations that the family had set up for him. I mean, let's face it, nobody sits around the table at Christmas and talks about when their son marries another man. At least most tables. And so the son has to speak his piece and has to come out to his parents. It's hard, I can only imagine. It's difficult, and yet that peace must be spoken for that individual to live with integrity and to live with peace. This last year or two, we have experienced a group of people speaking out, saying that there is racial inequality within our country. That there, the people of color are systematically targeted and abused and victimized. And yet to speak that truth caused conflict. And yet that is a truth that needs to be spoken so that we may have peace as a country. And even when it's spoken, <clears throat> people want to argue it. Mostly they, them, the people in power, the people with privilege who don't want change. This is what Elizabeth is doing to bring about peace. She is speaking as we need to speak. And just so you don't think everything is heavy and global, it also goes to a local level or a interpersonal level. Sometimes we need to speak truth to find our own peace. And I give you an example of my own life. My wife and I got married in March of 2006. It was a beautiful wedding of which we remember very little. <laughs> and we were, and still are, in love. And it was that time in our relationship where the other could do no wrong. I mean, everything was cute. Ah, oh, Stephen left the toilet seat up. <laughs> ah, Kimber squeezed the toothpaste from the center. Isn't that cute? <clears throat> but after a while, that which was cute 
becomes downright aggravating. And yet, we don't want to say anything because there might be conflict. So what happens? Well, it builds and it builds and it builds until suddenly it's World War III in our house because I left the toilet seat up and she squeezes a toothpaste from the middle. We needed to speak our truth and speak our peace. And in that, find peace. And I give you both examples because it is on a micro level and a macro level that we know we need to speak. We need to speak the truth. And sometimes that's an uncomfortable truth, and sometimes it may lead us to conflict. And please be aware, I am in no way saying me leaving the toilet seat up or her squeezing the toothpaste has anything or is any way equal to domestic violence or systemic racism. But we need to speak of these things. We need to speak the truth, even if it brings about conflict, even if it makes us uncomfortable. Because Elizabeth spoke. She dared to speak when she shouldn't have. That was not the tradition. That was not the custom. And yet it was she who named the one who prepared the way for the Lord. Are we willing to be the ones who speak up for that hope, for that love, for that joy, and for that peace that prepares the way of Christ? Because I believe in preparing the way of Christ, we work for unequivocal justice. We work so all may have an abundant life, so all may find peace. And I wonder, in Elizabeth speaking, if you hear what I hear. Amen. Will you pray with me? Loving God, Elizabeth spoke. And it had to be uncomfortable, and we confess that at times we remain silent rather than risk our own privilege or our own comfort. And yet in her example, we find that we must speak. That we must speak in order to find peace. That we must be prepared to risk preparing for your way. We must speak our truth. And in that, we find the peace that can only come from you. God, give us the spirit and the courage to be that voice. Give us the spirit and the courage to speak up when there is injustice. To speak up when there is hurt. To speak up when others are in pain or we ourselves find ourselves in pain. This is our hope and our prayer as we come together, praying the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For our mission moment today, we have this idea of peace and knowing that when we give, we give to bring peace to others. We also have a small part from the Nevada Partnership for Homeless Youth and how they are bringing about peace to the homeless youth of Nevada. Our world needs peace. I want to give peace. I want to give peace where the remnants of war remain. I want to give peace when children are threatened by gang violence. I want to give peace where people are hungry for the word of God. I want to give peace. I think you do too. Give peace today. 
The work of Global Ministries is possible when you give through the advance. I was 18 when I first got into my homeless situation. I was feeling like I don't know what to do. I didn't have nowhere to go. I didn't know what I was going to get to eat or if I was going to be able to still make it to work on time or go to school on time. I expected everything to be more of like, like a facility, like very, like everything is white and there's, there's nothing on the walls and the floor is linoleum and all of that and it was nothing like that. There's actually singing in the back when I was first at the drop-in center. That's like one of my favorite stories to tell. It's probably the first time I broke out of whatever state I was in and I was just like in the moment. It was great. <laughs> Here we are at the emergency shelter. This is the relaxing area. This is with the couches where you can relax. We also have the TV here, cooking area. We also have a staff member who brings in food for you as well from the drop-in center, our other part of the shelter. And here we have all the items that you need, personal hygiene, have a workstation as well. So in here we have one of the rooms. We have, there's two rooms here. It's four beds in total with two of the bunk, two bunk beds here, two bunk beds in the next room. Here I am like in a shelter, in an actual bed, completely removing every preconceived notion that I had about a shelter of it just being a cot. It's an actual bed. And then getting into the independent living program, being able to maintain my job, that's probably the biggest things of this whole experience. So here we are, one of the independent living programs, ILP. They're homes to you. You can be here, you can relax, you can enjoy yourselves. It's great to, to kind of have that aid out of your survival mode, because you when you're out there and you're not in a secure spot, all you're thinking about is what what else is gonna happen? When's the next thing coming? How do I get from here to there? And they actually help you step by step along the way. So that's that definitely sets them apart from everywhere else. NPHY's drop-in center is the hub of all of their services. That's one of the main points for you to get access to the emergency shelter to get case management, life schools classes, art classes, music classes. They could take a housing assessment for the independent living program. It's the central point for all of their services. Hello, my name is Antonio. Nice to meet you. My name is Taisik and thank you so much for listening. After Zechariah speaks, Zechariah, like Mary, sings. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably upon his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouths of his holy prophets from old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all who hate us. Thus he has shown mercy and promise to our ancestors, and he has remembered his covenant. The oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham is now granted to us, that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, may serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness, before God for all of our days. And you, child, will be called prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins, by the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us and give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet in the ways of peace. If the ushers would please come forward for the giving of God's tithes, our gifts, and our offerings.
our days and nights are filled with jolly songs, festive parties, and extravagant gifts beautifully wrapped. We confess we just don't want to hear a call to faithful living in the midst of a revelry. Yet you remind us that without hearing a call to faithful living, we risk missing the whole point of Christ's coming. We bring our gifts this morning to your altar, knowing they are not what they ought to be, and we are not who we are we hope to be. And in this acknowledgement, we become ready to hear the call of faithfulness and more ready to welcome our Savior. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mind you that on Christmas Eve we have three services. In the afternoon we have a three o'clock. In the evening we have a seven and a nine o'clock. All three services will be candlelight. The seven and the nine o'clock will also include communion and all will include carols and you'll never guess the topic. So with that said, I invite you to go in peace, to go out and speak for justice and truth and find peace in your hearts, and know that the peace of God goes with you. Amen. Amen.